Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Ivory Tower Boiler Room. This is Dr. Andrew Rimby. And officially, welcome to October. Welcome to spooky season, Halloween season, all things gothic and horror. And if you're watching on YouTube, yes, we're on YouTube now with our videos. And if you're watching on Patreon, you get full access to our videos. So that's another reason to join the ITBR professor level for $10 a month on Patreon. I'm joined with, I mean, it's a distinguished guest. I don't know how to explain the enigma that is my guest here, except she is someone who birthed me, someone who has known me for 31 years, my very own mother, Catherine Rimby. Welcome, Mom, to the podcast. Hi, Andrew, and everyone out there. She's like, Andrew, I'm so nervous to join. And I'm like, Mom, you're just going to have a conversation with me. So you do not, not you do not have to be nervous, Mom. I am kind of curious before we dig into all things Halloween and spooky season. Sarah Fraser just had me on her show to talk about the Ivory Tower Boiler Room as my full time job, being an entrepreneur. And I even bring up you and Dad because you had quite the reaction to my OnlyFans, and I think it's a good learning lesson for everyone there who has parents who are very. Um, you know, eager to, I'm trying to be gentle here. They're very, they mean well, but they don't necessarily understand their children's creative endeavors or even um, me being an only child. You know, you want the best for me. So I'm just curious if you can open up here right now. What was making you nervous about, say, even your son, dear Andrew, going on OnlyFans? Well, I only hear about the creepiness regarding OnlyFans. So I know it's normally, um, I don't know. You're talking about gonna... creepy older men. I mean, is that what you're worried? Well, you also were scared there was going to be stalkers at my door. Well, that's true. I do worry about that yes. because I don't know what to expect. I looked it up and it says that mostly it's sexual content involved with OnlyFans. And yeah, I don't want to think about that. And my mom has a background in marketing. So she was doing some market research. Um, and But I think it's a great moment, mom, of a learning lesson out there for everyone who is nervous about peer pressure, if it's something they really authentically want to do. And something I've been telling my mom is even I'm wearing a Carrie White shirt right now. My mom knows I'm obsessed with Stephen King. And Carrie was actually, I still remember your reaction, mom. In eighth grade, I had gotten my hands on Carrie from the um, yeah. Margaret Hagen Library. Shout out to them in South Jersey. They're a wonderful library if you live in South Jersey. Um, I recommend the Cherry Hill one too. But that you were like, oh my goodness, this is such a mature topic for you, Andrew. Like there's discussions about blood and periods. And, but I was like, no, I really am loving horror. And I felt really seen by Carrie's story and the bullying she goes through and how she becomes powerful from it, trying to find her voice. And it's something I've even found with being gay is finding my voice and educating everyone out there. So I want to let you all know, my mom and I, we worked through her differences and my differences in terms of trying to convince her that it's okay, I'm on OnlyFans. And like I said to her, I did not sign my name in blood um, to talk about spooky season, you know, signing contracts with the devil's blood. Um, I was like, I did not do that. Um, I didn't sign a pact with the OnlyFans devil. Um, I'm afraid what people are going to ask you to do. I And I understand that concern, mom. But- also, I have agency with the chats and I can stop talking with some of these people. Like I don't have to keep going back and forth. And there are ways to protect yourselves on OnlyFans by blocking people, limiting conversations. What's been wonderful though, mom, is my podcasts on OnlyFans, I'll talk about rewatching Queer as Folk or even doing these gothic discussions or Wizard of Oz even. And I've had the men who are paying, you know, for my material, it's almost like a reality show on OnlyFans I'm doing. Like I'm talking about 
opening up about dating, about what it was it like coming out as gay? What was it like losing my virginity, which my mom doesn't want to hear about, which is why I said to my parents, please don't join my OnlyFans. Um, not everything is for you. And dad, I appreciate the support, but you don't need to listen to everything. No, she's not going to join it. Um, and that's probably for the best. But even someone came to me and said, Andrew, I have a huge Carrie obsession and I knew about the Broadway musical. So it is interesting to hear who you attract on, you know, subscription programs like that. So, okay. I've opened up about my OnlyFans journey with my parents and now we can move on. Um, but something that I really love is, you know, wishing you all out there a happy Halloween. My mom was someone who I really always loved seeing horror movies with, or um, we used to go to this movie store, video store, called Gloucester County Videos with Flossie. She was the owner, just a beautiful woman, presence. And she had the horror section. Do you remember that section, Mom, what it was like? It was really scary. It was, it was scary. Do you remember what did it look like, the horror section? Well, it was in the dark hall behind a lot of other um, videos. So it gave you the creeps to begin with. Yeah, the it was pitch black. Yeah. <laughs> like, so you're trying to like find Scream or, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street and it's pitch black. And you're like, please, Flossie, can I have the light turned on? <laughs> but there's nothing like video stores. I miss them um, in a way. Um, streaming is just doesn't cut it. It's not the same experience. But well, she was very good at mm -hmm. recommending different she videos. had a catalog yeah yes. and she knew what you wanted which was yes she was a curator of videos yeah. um so i'm sure all of you out there had your favorite video store if you're of that age if not maybe you grew up with streaming um some of you have but when i knew that they were going to be bringing out a haunting in venice and it's based off of an Agatha Christie novel. So my mom and I went to the movies um, down here visiting my parents in South Jersey. And I was like, mom, we need to see A Haunting in Venice. So went to see it with my mom. We also had seen The Haunted Mansion um, in August. So we're going to kind of compare A Haunting in Venice to The Haunted Mansion, since both have the word haunting in the title. And I'm just going to open up here. So... If you don't know, A Haunting in Venice is based off of Halloween Party from 1969 by Agatha Christie. And we get introduced again to the Belgian detective Hercule Perrault. Um, and he's played by Kenneth Branagh. So Kenneth Branagh, mom, has been doing all of these Agatha Christie novels, um, bringing them to the screen. So I actually saw Death on the Nile uh, when that had come out a few years ago. But Here's our synopsis with Agatha Christie's novel, and we can kind of compare it to the movie. Um, actually, why don't you read it, Mom, our synopsis here. This is from Agatha Christie's novel. Oh, when everyone is preparing for a Halloween party at Rowena Drake's home in Woodley, Woodley Common, 13-year-old Joyce Reynolds tells everyone she had once seen a murder before. When the party ends, Joyce is found dead, Drowned in an apple bobbing tub. Ariadne uh, Oliver, uh, Oliver, attending the party while visiting her friend Judith Butler, calls on Hercule Perot to yeah. investigate the murder and Joyce's claim. With help from retired Superintendent Spence, Perot makes a list of deaths and disappearances for the last few years in Woodley Common. Yeah, so in the novel, um, Joyce, this 13-year-old, is found dead. There's the following characters in Halloween Party. Rowena's aunt, Mrs. Lulu, Lulu Wynn Smith, um, Leslie Ferrier, a lawyer's clerk, Charlotte Benfield, a 16-year-old shop assistant, Janet White. Oh, no, these are a list of deaths of people who had died in Woodley Common. Um, Janet White, a teacher at Elm School, and then um, there's, yeah, a bunch of, um, oh, Aradney Oliver is the crime fiction writer and Perot's friend. She attends the Halloween party that Joyce is killed during. Um, so I would say A Haunting in Venice is very 
loosely based off of this. It's not the same narrative. I would say we do get a um, robbing for apples scene, but it's not um, the murder scene. Right. So first of all, Agatha Christie's novel is set in England. We're actually in Venice here. And I thought right away, we can just walk through the movie. We just saw it last night. So it's kind of fresh in our heads. Mm -hmm. um, what did you think of the scenery? I enjoyed the scenery. Um, being able to see Venice and the way it was shot from above. Mm -hmm. And um, so I enjoyed it to the point I think many people would have left the theater wanting to go visit Venice. And Venice is such an interesting city. I was saying to my mom, why don't we visit? Because I forgot you can only go on the canals to get to every, if you have to go far in Venice. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But it's kind of like when I took you to Fire Island, mom, that you can't have cars and you have to yes. walk. Um, and I thought that, you were saying to me, this isn't a haunted house. It's like a palace. It's almost, it's a very, it seems like a very cold, um, almost crypt, like a very large palace that mm -hmm. Rowena lives in, the mother, but it, it, it's not warm and inviting. It's like all stone, marble, um, and it's not a traditional haunted house, like where they're all locked in a haunted house. It's like... Yeah, I thought that was really ghostly and gothic. Um, what did you think of Tina Fey playing the crime writer? Uh, it was very hard to wrap my head around the fact that she, as a comedian, that's how I view Tina Fey. So that was tough for me to buy into um, throughout the movie, especially at the beginning. I think she did a good job. I just felt like it was an odd role for her to be in. And then what did you think of the whole premise that they were going to attend a seance because um, Tina Fey's character, which I'll, you know, try to quickly remember. Oh, um, yeah, Aradney Oliver. Okay, so her name is the same in the movie. Um, she's trying to convince Kenneth Branagh is playing Perot that seances are real because this woman that Michelle Yeoh plays is a um, medium and she's in charge of seances. And Aradney, Tina Fey's character, wants to do a new novel based around this woman who does seances and like says to Perot, you need to come. This is actually um, going to be my next novel and I want you to witness that this is a real life case that you can then like be part of the success of this new novel because she's trying to like market herself um, as a murder mystery writer who actually has real life characters. So what did you think of Michelle right. Yeoh as this um, medium? I loved when she appeared. I felt like um, the movie really became more, what's the word? exciting mm -hmm. um as soon as even how her character came in on the boat so um from that point on i felt like it picked up the movie picked up and was more interesting at least in my eyes and she's wearing a mask yes. it was mm -hmm. like a masquerade mm -hmm. um there's even a lot of discussion about the black death in the renaissance in italy with um like the orphans who had lived in that Mm -hmm. How and who had lived in the palace, they were legend says they were locked in there and left to die. Um, I was a little confused about why nurses and doctors were killed there with the yeah. orphans. Like the orphans wanted revenge on nurses and doctors because they locked right. them in there. That I thought fell flat, and it doesn't come from Agatha yeah, Christie's novel. Mm -hmm. But um I did I agree with you? I think when Michelle Yeoh comes on the boat, it was one of the most like frightening moments. Yes. But also, that son, the young son, he's reading Edgar Allan Poe, and that's a very Poe. It felt like Edgar Allan Poe. One of his stories called "The Mask of the Red Death," which I like, which is set in Italy in the plague. Um, so I thought they were kind of doing some Poe hmm. telling of the story there. Um, okay, 
So we have Michelle Yeoh. What did you think about um, all of the accents of the characters? Uh, tough to understand. I mean, there were times that I wish I had closed caption so that I would understand what they were saying. Uh, if I were watching it, at home, I would definitely have clicked on closed captioning. And was it confusing that we were getting characters from so many countries? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, I was kind of curious, like, yeah. how did all these characters come together in Venice? Like, we never really found out. I felt like it wasn't, it was all over the place, in a way. Yeah. I and mean, there were times I sat there confused. Yeah. It, and I thought, am I the only one watching this that's confused? I feel like <laughs> it threw us into a storyline without really setting up how everyone got to Venice. Right. Like, I would have loved knowing how Tina Fey's character even arrived in Venice. Like, instead of her delivering an apple to sh like yeah. announce that she came and Perot knew that the writer had an apple, I, I thought. Yeah. I Get that. why didn't we see a flashback of them knowing each other or i don't know setting the scene especially because you said mom tina fey is usually a comedian like maybe we needed more drama from her at the beginning uh to I kind agree. of separate who she is as an actress mm -hmm. um and i wanted to know how did the characters who were staying in that uh i'll call it like a semi-castle yeah. wasn't it in a way um how did they end up there how did, why were they staying there? Mm -hmm. Well, the doctor is Not living funny. there because he was smitten and in love with Rowena, whose daughter, you find out early, has fallen to her death from the balcony because she's driven mad by... Um, the break of it. Well, that, uh, but hallucinations of apparently hearing the dead children speak to her to uh, tell her to kill herself. Um, and we're going to give spoilers, everyone. So if you haven't seen it, be ready. Uh, I thought the most, I thought the beginning was actually really good. I thought all the like Halloween party, it's set during Halloween. Mm -hmm. I thought when Michelle Yeoh arrives, it was yeah. really doing well. And like her spinning around and she's possessed, you think? Yes. Really was hitting a stride. Yeah. Um, I was confused when we were really left um, aghast with, it, it, it didn't, I wasn't understanding where the line was between um, the campy satire and actual horror like i thought mm -hmm. with michelle yo they were going for horror and it was working but then we're like oh she's a fraud because perot found out that her assistants actually were behind all the ghostly aspects of the seance like she's a fraud but then how was she turning like you said mom how was she spinning around in her chair possessed like is she actually possessed it's and then she gets killed and falls to her death on a sculpture and is impaled it was like yeah. this. I'm telling you, it didn't make sense. The secret. It just was. I mean, I was entertained by Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, I was sad that she died I early. Too. Like I thought we should have gotten more from her. I agree. Um, but did you know right away that Rowena was the one behind the murders? Um. No, I did not. Yeah. I really didn't. Um, no, not right away. Yeah, I actually really loved the actress who yes, played Rowena. I did okay, too. and she's from the UK. Okay. Yeah, Jessica Kelly Siobhan Riley. Um, I thought she was really well cast. Yes. Um, I love Kenneth Brana. I think he does a good job. Um I liked the doctor, who I think is Jamie Dornan. I did too. Who was in Fifty Shades of Grey, uh, which was interesting, but he did really well. Yes. And we have here the two assistants. You were kind of confused with um, Emma Liard, who plays apparently Desdemona, which I wouldn't even have known the assistant's name. Um, and Amir El Masri plays Alessandro. So 
yeah, what did you think about the assistance to Michelle Yeoh? Like, there's these assistants to the medium. I think it was confusing. I didn't realize they were her assistants. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't real clear. Yeah, and they're from where your relatives are from, which was Czechoslovakia or right. Hungary. My it was. People. Yeah, they're like I'm. They're from the Czech. They're from Czechoslovakia, and I was like, huh? And they're half siblings. Or I don't. Know. <laughs> it's just I like, didn't get it. I get it in the sense that murder mysteries tend to have really eccentric people, like personalities. I said to my mom, this movie was almost reminding me of Clue, but without the humor. But it wasn't like, funny. Clue is hilarious, <laughs> and they're so good in that movie. True. But I thought that it, it didn't know whether to be funny or to be right. seriously scary. Like, I wish it had picked Elaine because... Maybe Tina Fey should have been funny. I think she could have done that well. That actually would funny. have been... Yes, I think that would have helped. But then her character apparently is behind blackmailing. Like, is behind this whole scheme to sell books. She's going to basically um, fool everyone that the seance is real. And then I'm like, wait, so she was behind the whole manipulation of the seance it, 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 that didn't make sense it got very confusing yeah. and then like the security guard cop i forget what he is but he was like a cop was, yeah he's working in cahoots with her i'm like yeah there were too many there were a lot of pieces that didn't fit together and there was too much blackmailing like remember in clue mr um body yeah, Mr. Body is blackmailing all of them at the house, but then Mr. Body gets murdered. And you're like, right. wait, but Mr. Body's supposed to be the one in charge of the piece, putting all the chess pieces in place. So then that's why Clue works, because you don't Tim know. Curry? No, no, Mr. Body is, um, Tim Curry's a butler. Oh. He's just called the butler. Oh. Mr. Body like comes in and tells each of them what their blackmail is, and then the lights go off and he's found dead. Oh. Um, but okay, so let's move to in a haunting in Venice. Something that I thought did work well was the son. I liked the boy. I thought he was really yes. well cast and kind of creepy. He's like, I hear the voices. Mm -hmm. Or I, I was saying, good. yeah, I was saying to my mom, it's almost like the sixth sense. Yes. Right. And then mm -hmm. we find out that Rowena has been poisoning her daughter with like a hallucinant. Right. But then it lost me when it was like, it's a form of honey that's on a hallucinogenic poison. And I was like, yeah. why can't she just have been like giving her a poison that causes hallucinations? Like, why do we need the bees in the garden? It was just, again, I think it was trying to do a lot. Like, be so realistic that it actually confused people. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And yeah, but I thought like her, when you find out that she's actually the one who like has been behind the murders, it was um, really her unraveling. But then again, she like feels that the spirit of her daughter, um, once she's found out she's on the balcony and thinks her daughter is there and pushes her and then she falls to her death and i was like it's remember like she falls rowena falls from the tower at the end and is murdered not murdered she like falls off and dies yeah that, yeah i didn't like i kind of wanted more from her character of maybe she doesn't die right away and like yeah um has to like be, I don't know, prosecuted. It just was, um, again, I think the murder mystery genre can only do so much. Mm -hmm. And But it does make me want to read Halloween Party mm -hmm. after watching. I kind of do want to, yeah. I want to mm -hmm. see like how, I don't think all Agatha Christie novels can work well as movies. Like, I think it's just maybe the genre of a murder of her murder mysteries. Mm -hmm. um, I was saying to my mom, I think this could have worked as a play yeah. because remember mom, there's that horror play called when the, an inspector calls or, yes. mm -hmm. which is kind of the same. They're all locked in the house. People yeah. die. Um, and then I was saying to my mom, remember, we just saw the haunted mansion and the Haunted Mansion is 
funny. I mean, that's more comedic, but it is kind of serious. Mm-hmm. Like his fiance dies and he's like depressed, the main character. And um, yeah. I thought that cast, I was actually- it Had a good story. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I went into it and I thought it was going to be really just campy and yeah. like for children. And I thought it was actually a pretty serious movie. Yeah. I liked it. I, I think did too. I like I the Haunted Mansion more than a haunting in Venice. I agree. Um, like I don't think I'm gonna watch a haunting in Venice again. Yeah. Like I think I've seen it and I'm good. Um now I'm getting my mom hooked on a, a the haunting of Hill House because I think that's a really more creepy um horror story on TV. Um that Mike Flanagan directs mom and the Haunting of Hill House is based on Shirley Jackson's novel. And um, remember there was that movie, The Haunting? It's the same hmm. storyline. It was like a movie where they're all in a haunted house. And um, it also is in the oh, 1960s okay. in black and white. Um, the Haunting of, I don't think it's called The Haunting of Hill House. I think it's just called The Haunting. But um, they're all basically... Um, being visited by ghosts, but possessed, like people get possessed. And I always find the best horror movies, in my opinion, are the ones where you don't know what's real and what's fake. Like when in the sixth sense, you just see um, the little boy um, is in that tent. Like he's always playing in the tent and then he's like visited by the ghosts who like just appear like that to me is frightening or like when the girl wants him to figure out that her mom poisoned her, but like you just see her under the bed. Like I think, and she gives him the videotape that like reveals what her mom did. I like those moments like, Mm -hmm. or ghost even, I mean, ghost is like scary, but it's also funny with wit Whoopi Goldberg and um, Demi Moore. Yeah. I love that movie. Mm -hmm. Mm. So I hope mom, I gave my mom a task. I'm like, you need to watch The Haunting of Hill House. I want to know what you think because I find it to be one of the best ghost um, stories done recently on TV. And I think with haunting movies, there always has to be loss. Like someone, a family member's passed away and then they're revisiting. They're um, visiting everyone in dreams or they you think you see them. And they kind of try to do that in A Haunting in Venice when... Um, Perot sees the little girl who's actually the fiance, but she's in a girl form. Yeah, that was oh, kind of yes. confusing, though. Mm-hmm. Like, why didn't she just appear to him as the like, oh, yeah, teenager yes. or as the that 20 year old woman? Right. Like, why is she a little girl? Yeah, that was strange because then everyone's like, Who is this person? <laughs> Again, they could have had more, I thought moments where the audience didn't know if they were like if we were hallucinating like i wish they had done because oh then you find out he's hallucinating because he drank the honey that is poisonous and i'm like huh like now he's hallucinating and but why is the little boy see the ghost I, i i none of it's answered maybe he drank honey and we didn't see it i'm just kidding (laughs) I don't know. So would you recommend people see A Haunting in Venice? Well, it's funny you say that because I did check out um, reviews from various people when you said you wanted me to talk Mm -hmm. about it. And some gave it a five out of five. And then those who gave it a one or two stars out of five, what they said really justified a lot of different things that you and I both agree upon. And so I, I, I was disappointed. I thought I would really enjoy it uh, just because of the name, Mm -hmm. the title. So I think a lot of people go into it hoping, you know, that it's going to be exciting and you know, it's in Venice. um, And it's coming out during Halloween season. Right. But it really did not live up to what I thought the horror it was going to be. Right. 
like I saw my big fat Greek wedding number three because I knew it took place in Greece and that's and so I did, mean did you enjoy I, my big fat Greek wedding I three did. more than this well oh yeah oh. yes yes definitely they showed a lot of scenery in there maybe they could have shown more I don't know scenery or well, I don't know. Didn't you see the? Didn't you see the new Halloween? Did you see? No, I didn't. No, you saw the one before it though with Jamie Lee Curtis. Yes, on Halloween I thought. On Halloween, yes. Those I thought were pretty good actually. Oh, you didn't see? Didn't see the latest one. And you didn't see the new screen. No, that was good. Um, but right, we have my mom has a task now. She's gonna watch the Haunting of Hill House. She'll come back with me on Zoom. We're gonna talk about it. Um, and I'm going to see, I don't know if it'll be with my mom, but I'm definitely going to see The Exorcist because that looks really good. And I like possession movies, I like ghosts, supernatural, um, the nun too. I like those types of paranormal activity movies one of my favorites poltergeist oh my god yeah i like poltergeist. well that's kind of like the exorcist mm -hmm. um the po yeah poltergeist the first one is just so good see i like i'm not a gremlins fan like some people like gremlins i think that's like eh, it's too corny in my opinion yeah. um or even chucky like i don't get scared i'm like this little doll is just I know. Or Saw, like Saw was premiering when we were seeing A Haunting in Venice. And I just find the gore is not even scary. I'm just, it's shock value. I don't like shock value right. movies. Right, right. Um, but yeah, what else do we have? We have The Exorcism. We have The Nun 2. Um, oh, there's the new The Fall of the House of Usher on Netflix, which I'll have to get you to start watching. I'm going to do an episode on that because you all know I'm a 19th century scholar. So I need to know what... Actually, the director of that mom and creator is the one who did Haunting of Hill House. So I think TV is doing a pretty good job right now with like gothic and horror. Um, yeah, Haunting in Venice did not. It's not one that I would recommend on the top of the list. There's so many more. Like, again, it wanted me. Oh, what lies beneath? That's what I want to talk about. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. There's a scene in this movie that really reminds me of what lies beneath when Rowena falls to her death. She's like imagines that you can see the spirit of her daughter taking her under and we get that yeah. moment in what lies beneath when michelle pfeiffer falls into the water and she's like taken under by um is it the ex-wife or the ex-girlfriend i forget but this man has been has like killed another has killed a woman and is trying to kill michelle pfeiffer's character and I thought like that was a great movie. Like that really it worked. Thriller. Yeah, thriller. Um, and that's where I thought Maybe this that's what I thought this was going to be. I did too. I thought it was gonna be a thriller. It was not a thriller. Right. Um and even if anyone out there has seen um Stir of Echoes, I was trying to talk to my mom, but she forgot. Like, I don't think my mom saw that movie. Um remember your dad doesn't like scary movies, so it's tough to for me to watch them by myself. I mean, I know you do, but you know, you're young. But um, <laughs> well, you saw a lot of horror movies when they had come out. I thought, like, didn't you I see have. The Exorcist? Though I read the book. Yeah, you didn't see it because I was too scared to see the movie. Mm -hmm. So, but did you see the original Halloween? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. How about yeah, um, Nightmare on Elm Street? Um, no, I never saw. Yeah, that one doesn't even scare me. But um, or how about Friday the Thirteenth? Um, that's what Jason. Yeah. Right? Well, his mom is the first one. He's mm -hmm. the second one, I think. I don't think so. You saw the original Scream because we watched it. Yes. Yeah. And I am, everyone out there, I am covering Scream. We're actually, I'm going to be joined with um, Mary and a guest of mine, a friend of mine, um, who you have to wait to hear who it is. But we're going to actually watch Scream with you all, like where we're going to hit the play button and you all can watch mm -hmm. Scream with us. And we're going to talk about it as it's going on, like behind us, like as we're watching it with you, what's happening. And like, I've taught Scream before, so... I'm going to bring up like what my students have talked about. I think it's, I still think Scream is one of the best that bridges um, 
horror with comedy, like playing into what the horror movie is. It's making fun of itself in a way. Mm -hmm. Um, And I kind of thought they were trying to make fun of the genre here of murder mysteries, but it kind of didn't. uh, It fell flat. It fell flat. And it felt like the acting was forced sometimes of like, now the men are going to fight with each other. And I'm like, wait, what's happening? Um, now like, back up is scream is where it opens with Drew Barrymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Well, and remember the whole campaign was with Drew Barrymore in the on the front um in the poster. People thought Drew Barrymore was like the main character and then she's murdered. Um which is also why I think Halloween worked really well because Halloween was such a low budget movie and then somehow it became like just a cult classic with jamie lee well and jamie lee curtis's mom was in psycho yeah right uh janet lee yes yeah so jamie lee curtis became the um what do they call her scream queen oh yes yeah yeah Mm -hmm. um and jamie lee curtis is in haunted mansion um i thought she was so good in it um Mm -hmm. madame leota uh again i would recommend haunted mansion for everyone out there um yeah, Haunting in Venice, mm, I would say Haunted Mansion before Haunting in Venice. But yeah, so mom, your homework is The Haunting of Hill House. You'll come back and discuss a few episodes, what you're thinking about it. Um, hopefully you can get dad to watch, even though he'll be really scared. Oh, he'll do this. He'll cover his eyes. He did that with cocaine beer, I told you. When I, I realized it was a satire, it was. It, it's yeah, cocaine- like when you and I watch Squid Games. And he yeah. could not watch it. And we realized it was, you know, it, yeah. It was you, over you the top. Take it, yeah, you couldn't take it serious. Exactly. It's not a serious show. No. Um, I mean, it's making points about society, but it it's is. not a That's serious, right. like. He was like, what, cocaine berry? <laughs> Which made me laugh. So then, yeah. Oh, my was... gosh. Well, this has been fun, Mom. Um, any... any... Halloween stories, like in terms of um, remembering your childhood, like, is there anything you remember about horror, like haunted houses or what was it like growing up when Halloween would come around? Like, was it a holiday you really remember well or have any specific memories? Trick or treating. And back then when I was younger, when you went trick or treating, um, you had to wait you had to go into the people's homes and they had to guess who you were like who you were not the character and i mean so things have changed a lot but that's i know it happened now i mean wait you would have to wait in their living room and they'd have to guess who you are to get the candy yeah or at their front door yeah you had to wait i mean we did have a neighbor right here I mean, remember when I used to go with, like, be with my friends and we had a fog machine and we would scare people on the porch? I love that. That was great. I feel like no one scares anyone anymore. Like, they're, I think maybe they're too worried about lawsuits. Maybe. And we also had a neighbor who had a haunted backyard. I know. That was fun. They yeah. The but way. they still do. My mom loves. I do like going to Walkthroughs. Yes. We love haunted houses. I agree. Well, we would go to Six Flags. Oh, yes. I don't know what they're oh, doing now. Great. They still do. Um, the hayride, you know. What do they call hopefully it? Hopefully it's scary now, but. They, yeah, but what's the theme called at Six Flags oh, in New geez. Jersey? It's called Freight Fest. Oh, yes. But remember when we would go in the late 90s and early 2000s, they would have the Haunted Hayride. They would have um, like a guillotine show. Yes. It was like creepy. I mean, things were. And they ran in the out in the audience. Yeah. Yeah, even that haunted hayride was really freaky. Um, but I even went to the Eastern State Penitentiary. I like that um, experience. There's one on Long Island. I think I'm going to go with my friends on the North Fork. It's in Wading River. And it's like a corn maze into the house, which is kind of cool. But again, whenever I'm with anyone, they throw me to the front, which I'm fine with because the front usually doesn't get scared because they're like the cur- courageous people. They scare the middle. If you're in the middle. Or the last. Mm. Yeah, but you get to see everyone get scared. I, yeah, you're right. I think the front is probably your best bet if you're like, yeah, that's you that's don't want to be scared. Um, the second. The second in line. Maybe. Now we have Creamy Acres. Yeah, in Lancaster. No, 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 in Mulca Hill. Hill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. 
um creamy acres did that. yeah was fun i yes. love um their corn mazes yeah um oh and they also have houses through a lot of different places when they had it set up mm -hmm. um we were yeah. even in um ripley's believe it or not i always oh, remember geez. in san oh, antonio and they had the that haunted so miners nice. walk through that was and you crazy. went in like a minor car to get up there and there were only it was my mom was just awesome. and i um and we were by ourselves and they put us through the walkthrough and that was kind of oh and there were like rat tails that hit us there was my legs were actually shaking i was so scared and then uh when we were in the dark room and we couldn't find our way out they i they must have felt sorry for us because then they would say no over here at first they said it like, you know, just to freak us out, but then they really needed to guide us out of there. Remember that? Yeah. No, over here. No, you're going the wrong way. Turn around. That's funny. That's oh funny. my God. Okay. Well, but that, that was great. I mean, I'll always remember that it was down in San Antonio. Yeah. But yeah. wait, and didn't that you also, great. you told me the story that you put on a haunted house I in did. Like your town in South Jersey. Yep. Right. And you county college. Yeah. And I thought I raised like, money. You had I, you were a witch. I was a witch. With like Barbie dolls that were I, beheaded with blood or something. Had a yeah. A pot. Yeah. And um, yeah, we yeah, we made it scary. But then if they were little, mm -hmm. if they were young children, we would not scare them. Yeah. You just knew better. <laughs> well, even my high school had a horror. I thought a haunted walkthrough in the halls. I don't know. We had a lot. We have a lot of horror things in the town or in the area. We used to. Um, but again, I think there's not as many like haunted walkthroughs because they're afraid of. Sure. I'm sure now you have yeah. to sign con like legal documents. I'm Probably. sure when I go to certain places, I'll have to sign um, oh, gee. a document that like I'm not going to sue or anything. Right. Um. But yeah, so this was fun, Mom. I'm excited for you yeah. to continue to watch these horror shows or movies. And yeah. I love Halloween. I do. It is it's the best. Fun. I think it's the best holiday, in my opinion. And and then I like the fall. Well, and in the yeah. Northeast, we got the leaves changing, yes. mm -hmm. the pumpkin patches, cider. Like we were just at. Yeah. You could shout it out. Shout out Duffields. Yeah. Farmer's Market. Mm -hmm. I've never gone through their corn maze. I didn't even realize... I just thought it was for little kids. And now I want to look into that. When we used to go away. to a corn maze oh, in Lancaster. Geez, that really is great. Cherry Crest Farms. Yeah. And they would give you that. Um, a scavenger hunt in a way. Yeah. Or even, I thought Mullica Hill, they used to have a Wizard of Oz corn maze. Remember? There was like did. a theme Wizard of Oz. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Well, this has been great, Mom. Hopefully... Everyone out there, let me know We're if you, it. yeah, We're coming in and out. Oh. We're coming in and out on our green screen, That's but fun. um, you know, I'm gonna have my mom back on. We're gonna do more hard discussions. I'll bring her on for special topics. Maybe I'll get my dad on with her eventually. If he watches Haunting of Hill House, he needs to come on with you for the Zoom. Um, but my dad gets really nervous on podcasts. But you know, I'm getting him and my mom eased into this format. But yeah. okay. So everyone can actually follow my mom on Instagram. Do you remember your Instagram handle? Oh, jeez. At? At KJ Rimby. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, my name. It's your oh. name. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, bye to everyone out there. And I'm going to get to talk to my mom more since I'm hanging out here for the weekend. Okay. okay. Bye, everyone. Oh, and let us all know what your favorite horror movies are. Like, maybe there's ones that I'm not even aware right. of. Like, message me. You know, let me know what you think of A Haunting in Venice. I'm curious who else is watching this. Um, yeah. Bye, everyone.